Hello there my fellow Holotable heroes and welcome to another Datacron video. You've probably already seen that the brand new set is out and there are some bonkers one in there especially for first order. So as always uh, I updated the Datacron uh, farming list uh, on my Swag of Life website so I want to go through with you in this video so let's just get into it. Now set 15 together as one is actually quite a straightforward set there isn't a whole lot of complicated things going on. For level 3 you will want one that you get 15% health and protection for each other ally, either dark side or light side. The bonus is the same. So ideally all level 3s for the most part will just, just shoot for those. Stats as well, pretty straightforward. Probably the top should be armor penetration and offense. I guess you could throw in critical damage in there, but with so many teams having critical damage immunity of some sorts, I'll just prioritize offense and armor penetration. Uh, critical avoidance maybe could be helpful, but again, there's just so many teams that either have you know advantage or such a high critical chance that you know no no matter how much critical avoidance you will put on, it won't help you all that much. Uh, but definitely armor penetration and offense. Uh, obviously, with the caveat that armor penetration only applies to units that deal physical damage. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to use my Fennec to counter Lord Vader with armor penetration, uh, she's doing special damage, so uh, their armor penetration won't be helpful at all, uh, just offense. So there is one small addition I added to my farming list here, uh, which is uh, showing uh, what stats the, to focus on, so just presented by icons, and if you do need a reminder of what it is, you just hover over it and it will tell you what stats to focus on. But again, stats very straightforward. Level 3, very straightforward. In terms of level 6 overall, uh, First Order uh, has one good one basically. Well, two maybe. Inquisitors, they have one good one. Gungans, they have one good one. And Galactic Republic basically has got one, maybe two good ones. So same like level 3, level 6s will be more or less the same one over and over again. Um, just trying to focus on those. And then in terms of level 9s, uh, uh, Kylo is a bit broken, I think. Uh, so definitely, first order has got uh, actually three good level nines to go through. Um, then as well, Padme, she's okay. Um, but otherwise, the other level nines, I don't think they're like that game breaking. Like the Riva one is nice, but you know, I don't think it'll move the needle for Riva matches. And same thing for Gungans. Level nine boosts are nice, but again, uh, Gungans are pretty broken already as they come. Uh, so that's kind of the overview uh, of the set. So if you want to know, we can just go through uh, one by one here on the list and just I can talk you through it, what my thoughts are. Uh, so uh, for me, priority again, as always, uh, you can uh, reorder priority if you, you know you don't agree with the default priority I set. And then also, for example, if you're like, well, I don't have gun guns, so you can just go ahead and hide that so you, you know from the list. And then obviously, if you need a reminder how this tool works, uh, as you are, um, you know, getting your bonuses and when you're re-rolling, you're just kind of selecting, okay, I've got this one, I've got this one, and, you know, then they turn green that, you know, they are done. Uh, it's just a quick, um, you know, summary of how this tool works. I'm going to go ahead and unhide the Gungans so we can talk about them. Uh, so the first, probably, if you do have Supreme in a car rent, which I would imagine it's one of, is it the most popular Galactic Legend? It has to be out there. So many of you will have Kylo unlocked already. Uh, I'm not going to talk about level 3s because they're all um, <laughs> gaining extra health and protection for each other ally. Obviously in 3v3 this is going to be less impactful but in 5v5 we will be getting a nice boost there to both health and protection. Um, and then in terms of the um, level 6 there are two ways you can go about this. I think if you are shooting uh, for Supreme in the and level 9 then this uh, level 6 will be better since so the one that we actually just had for Empire. So at the start of first turn, first order allies will gain offense equal to 400% of their current defense and then they lose 50% defense. So imagine getting uh, lots of extra offense for your Kylo already in combination with armor penetration, maybe some offense, and then you also add his level 9 on top. So Supreme the Kylo Ren deals 5% more damage per Relic Amplifier level on all allies present at the start of the battle. So let's say you have a full, I don't know, Relic 8 squad, I know, a bit optimistic, but let's say you do. Uh, that means that uh, 8 times 5, you'll be getting 40% for each, and then you got 5, you're basically getting like 
not extra offense this is more damage more damage is literally double so in combination with extra offense extra armor penetration and this level 9 you've probably seen on youtube uh, some bonkers videos supreme color and just with aoe just one shotting the entire team on his first turn absolutely bonkers one i think this one um probably i mean it's gonna be good on defense i guess uh but also for offense it's gonna be very fun so it's gonna be one of those things like do i put kyle on defense make i don't make it annoying to beat or do i keep him for offense because that's going to be so much fun the other route for supreme color ran uh, you can go uh is um with the level six uh this one that gives you stacking offense so uh, let's go ahead and read it it's quite a long one whenever first order ally scores a critical hit which is gonna be a lot the leader ally uh, gains 10 percent offense stacking until end of the encounter so we get some stacking offense um so as you can see the difference already here this one it'll take a few turns that you ramp up the offense whereas level 9 supreme color range just gives you instant boost straight out of the gate and then if the leader scores critical hit you get more additional offense you also get some uh, recovery uh, health and uh, recovery protection which is nice like first order banners are never good if you do use them on offense so you know maybe this will make first order more efficient on offense and this is a cool thing as well whenever the leader uses an ability remove one percent meter from first order allies and why is that cool uh, because with some pretty color running there whenever first order allies um lose turn meter uh, they are gaining 10 percent max health and max protection just making them very very durable uh, and then let's move on that's a lot there to go through and then also whenever they lose they gain extra critical damage stacking for two turns so more damage there whenever first order ally attacks a stunned enemy they deal 10 percent max health to that enemy eh, 10 percent max health is not a lot really this damage can defeat enemies and finally whenever the leader is not damaged during the enemy's turn if there are no allies with damage immunity a random first order ally gains damage immunity a bit of random damage immunity i guess is nice um so you know it's a pretty nice one again uh, it has a little bit different one like this one is totally like you know big offense out of the gate this one just has a little bit more durability uh, to it as well so it really depends you know what you're gonna use your first order for and then with this combination uh first order pilot is very nice uh, level nine because while some perimeter kylo ren is active first order special forces type pilot can't be defeated so this is the same cheese like we have uh with admiral redis and gene the gene cannot be defeated while redis is alive so especially if you're using this on offense you can probably cheese because as we know ai kind of has priority to go uh towards weakest um enemies uh so then probably you know you can just probably do 2v5 most teams uh, will just be able to cheese it in this way on top of it all uh, while first orders have advantage they ignore taunt uh so obviously if you do start off with advantage with hux in there you will have advantage and then you can just ignore the taunt straight away you can just get around the taunts and everything like if you're fighting jabba you just go straight uh for leia so definitely while uh, Supreme Color Run, you know, just a pure damage, uh, this one gives you a lot more uh, flexibility and utility depending on uh, what you need. All right, let's continue reading this book of a data crown. Whenever the ally in the leader slot or first order special force type pilot are damaged, while they have advantage, they stun the enemy for one turn, which can't be resisted. <laughs> now that's gonna be fun. Again, you know, helping you cheese your way through lots of enemies. Whenever an enemy is stunned, first order, special uh, pilot, gain 5%, uh, that's fine. He and the ally in the leader slot gain 10% max health until the end of the encounter. So again, more durability for a team. And if the ally in the leader slot is supreme in the color rank, he gains 5% ultimate charge. So just a little bit help you there. Whenever a stunned enemy is defeated, they can't be revived. Well, supreme in the color rank is doing all the killing here anyway, so he prevents revives already the ally in the leader slot also gains a bonus turn uh, which i guess is okay but a bit of situational and as well the leader in the first order pilot recover 100 percent health and protection uh, so definitely this combination just gives you firepower raw damage pure damage straight out of the gate as uh, well as this one has a little bit more durability maybe you know protecting banners a bit better um so i can't really say which one will be better i think it's just going to be de depending on the use case so if you can i will get both of these combinations and then you know we can do some playing around and see which one is better for which situation both of them very good 
All right, uh, let's move on to the Lord Vader. Now, there is not specific anything for Empire or Lord Vader. Again, we'll just, you know, use extra health and protection level 3. And then you could just stop there, have level 3. But if you maybe do want to push it a little bit, uh, you could go down the Inquisitor route. So whenever Inquisitor allies start a turn with fewer than two buffs, all other allies gain 15% turn meter. So you could throw in your leftover Inquisitors, uh, they here with Lord Vader. Um, but again, in most cases they do have more than two buffs, so this won't trigger really all that often. However, this will allow you to unlock Night Sister level 9, so you can then throw in Night Sister as a second tank next to Royal Guard, because she and actually all Inquisitor allies will be gaining 200% max health and will be immune to ability blocks, so this will make Night Sister very, very thick. Uh, Night Sister deals bonus damage based on her health with her basic ability if the enemy is inflicted with Purge. I think this is gonna be very, very... Well, it sounds cool. Uh, there isn't a really a whole lot of Purge going on there. <laughs> if you just, just do have Night Sister for uh, under Lord Vader. Uh, so not much else there. If an enemy has six stacks of Purge, when uh, this won't happen under Lord Vader, the enemies will never, I think, have six stacks of Purge anyway. Uh, yeah. So basically, it will just make Ninth Sister, or if you also throw in Second Sister or something like that, this will make her very thick. Uh, I guess another option would be um, to use Ninth Sister under Seer. And again, it will make uh, Ninth Sisters a lot thicker there as well. Uh, but, you know, I think uh, if you do have Lord Vader, she's great there under Lord Vader. And let's uh, move on to Jedi Master Kenobi squad. So again, we'll use extra health and protection. And this is going to be an absolute pain, uh, this uh, level 6 for Galactic Republic. Do you remember when the Rebels had this bonus? When Leia, uh, uh, Galactic Legend Leia had this bonus? You're just hitting them and hitting them, they're taking no damage. Because at the start of each turn, if non-Galactic uh, Legend Republic allies have 50% or more turn meter, damage they receive is reduced by 75% until the end of turn. As we've learned this uh, as well when we were fighting uh, Leia, um, this means that also damage over times, burning, thermal detonators, uh, whenever en enemies will take a turn, will basically take no damage from that as well. Uh, so Jedi Master Kenobi will be very tough uh, to take down if you do put him on defense. Because uh, normally, you know, you throw Reva at them and you just immediately gun down uh, General Kenobi, get him out of there. With his data Kron, uh-uh. They will be very thick, very hard to kill in combination, obviously, with more their health and protection. This is going to be a pain to deal with as well, I think, if it's put on defense. Padme level 9. I don't always include Padme under Jedi Master Kenobi, but if you do, I guess a little bit of extra help there as well. With Padme Crown, so whenever Galactic uh, Republic ally with Courage or Protection Up uses an ability. Remember, we always start with Protection Up uh, there with Jedi Master Kenobi. Although, although is that although does that count as a bonus protection or protection app? So not exactly sure how this will interact. Um, however, oh yeah, uses an ability. If there are no enemies with provoke, ah, okay, provoke mechanic isn't all that great, I think. Whenever another Galactic Republic ally recovers health or protection, Padme recovers double that amount. Under Jedi Master Kenobi, again, I don't think that's going to really be that much of a problem. Because Padme is one of the last enemies that go down anyways. Whenever enemy targets a non-Galactic uh, uh, Legend, Galactic Republic ally with protection up, while attacking out of turn, they damage received to... Uh, well, it's a bit situational, but I guess... If you're trying to do Jedi Master Luke, you're calling somebody to assist with inherited teachings, then the damage will be reduced to 1. Oh man, does that mean that Jedi Master Luke will have absolutely no chance of taking down Padme? Wow, I mean, sorry, taking down Jedi Master Kenobi with Padme Crown because all it's doing attacks out of turn. Oh boy. Jedi Master Kenobi is going to be a pain to deal with, it looks like. Anyway, let's continue reading. Whenever non-Galactic Legend Galactic Republic ally resists a debuff, then... Okay, fine, that's fine. Yeah, so definitely um, a lot of stuff happening in here, but I guess the most powerful mechanic is this one. Um, that while attacking out of turn, 
if your guy if uh, galactic public allies have protection up damage they receive is reduced to one. Oh boy this is gonna be a nightmare i guess we'll have to see how how this will work in practice but this looks like an absolute pain to deal with okay and we do have inquisitor one is it just me or is this the third time we have Inquisitor Datacrons? It seems like Inquisitor, since they were launched, they constantly have either an Inquisitor Datacron, Empire Datacron, or Unaligned Force User Datacron. Just something all the time to make them relevant. Uh, now for level 6, I guess, I think this is the best one. So whenever an Inquisitor ally inflicts a stack of Purge, they gain 5% defense, offense, and tenacity for one turn. Now remember, it's only for one turn. Uh, but uh, Riva, right, she starts off, she will inflict Purge uh, uh, on the enemies, I think, so does Grand Inquisitor, right, so they immediately the start will already gain some uh, offense, defense, which I guess is nice, but uh, just 5%, doesn't sound all that broken. Whenever a stack of Purge is consumed or dispelled on an enemy, expose them for one turn. So... If somebody has six stacks of purge on them and they cleansed it, does that mean there'll be six exposes on them? Huh. This might make it complicated for Treya. Because with Treya, she's all the time cleansing, right? And then all of the exposes. Hmm. That will be interesting for sure. Whenever an Inquisitor ally attacks an enemy inflicted with a stack of purge, a random other ally assists, dealing 5% bonus damage. Hmm. Okay. Although I'm not sure if you're using Treya to beat Riva, all those attacks out of turn will hurt uh, your will hurt the team, right? I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting data cron. Definitely this one uh, with expose, this one could be dangerous. Uh and let's go ahead and have a look at the Riva. I don't know. I, it's okay, but I don't see this being a game changer. Whenever any character is defeated, first sister gains hatred for the rest of the battle. But she already starts off with a hatred. And the first time she's defeated, she already starts with hatred. So she's really the last one to stand anyway. So I don't think this really sounds all that useful. I don't know. And while first sister has hatred, she also has 100% counter chance and 50% critical damage. Counter chance is nice, but again, if, if you're using Treya to beat Riva, you don't want to be counter attacking. I don't know. Uh, a bit a bit mix, mixed bag this Datacron, I think. At the start of First Sister's turn, all Inquisitors, allies with Tone, dispel all debuffs on themselves, recover health and protection, gain 20 speed for two turns. Well, normally Riva, she's the only one taunting, um, so I guess she'll be dispelling some buffs on herself, but I don't know. It doesn't sound really that great, but maybe I'm missing something here. Okay, uh, then just kind of some a uh, bit more random stuff, really nothing uh, faction specific. Uh, it's just more like, uh, you know, just a reminder that these teams will benefit, well, any team will benefit uh, for extra health and protection. Uh, for Jedi Master Luke, you could throw in a level 6 for reduced damage for uh, uh, Galactic Republic allies, because remember some Jedi that we would use under Master Luke are Galactic Republic, like I think I like to Shakti there, Barris, sometimes even Isla, the Rogue Galactic Republic, right? Uh, Grandmaster Yoda. Um, so, you know, a little bit helping there, a little bit survive longer, why not? Um, now, Padme, I would include Padme Crown under Jedi Master Kenobi, but if you're using Padme as a standalone team, um, it's a pretty, pretty nice one as well because on level 6, while a Galactic Republic ally uh, with protection up assist, if there are no enemies with protection disruption, inflict. Inflict it for one turn on the target, so we get a little bit protection disruption. Um, because you know how Padme is struggling maybe to take down Savage or something. Uh, or even Nest or whatever, right? If you get disruption on them, you can ju just go straight for health. And Courage deals damage based on health. So, wow, okay, this, this could be interesting. And also, while Galactic Republic allies uh, have protection up, uh, they have some... Eh, okay, they can ignore taunt. So that's good as well, could be nice as well. Um, so maybe Treya will be a total liability on defense this time, it seems. <laughs> and then uh, level 9 for Pad may be covered already, but essentially whenever enemy uh, is attacking an ally with protection up, while attacking out of turn, the damage uh, they receive is reduced to 1. So a little bit of extra damage there um, 
reduction because I guess you could go with again with damage reduction level 6 but I think for Padme just being able to disable protection and ignore taunt I think it's going to be very very useful. Um, in terms of, uh, I know we got Sif Crons uh, at the moment, but just something to bear in mind, uh, you know, you will want a few of these stacked up because we don't know what next set will be. Uh, so Jabba, uh, as well as Malgus, you know, they will just take uh, level 3 health and protection, that's all what they need. Uh, and here we have Leia, so similar like Jedi Master Luke, you will want uh, probably Galactic Republic, uh, the reduction damage, because R2 that, you know, we normally use, he's the Galactic Republic unit. Uh, so then R2 will be very difficult to take down. As we know from the last time when the Rebels had this level 6, man, that was a pain. Um, again, uh, we do have great resistance Kron at the moment, but just something, again, further down the line. You want to get Balkron for Ray, and again, get the reduced damage for Galactic Republic if you can, you know, in case. Uh, sometimes I like to use Barris, she's Galactic Republic, just, you know, again, uh, making Barris uh, take a little bit less damage. Uh, why not? Or I think some people like to put General Kenobi in there. Um, you know, Ray's very versatile when it comes to what we place with her on defense. And then Sif Eternal again, just want Balkaron. Um, this, I'm not saying you should go for it, but um, you may want to consider like a first order Stormtrooper because he's a tank and you know, sometimes Sif Eternal, all he needs is a bunch of dark side tanks uh, and you know, he'll do the rest. You don't really need to put anything around him. Especially now that kind of what is being used with Trench, uh, see that then I really needs lots of tanks around him to do much <laughs> these days. Uh, now we can start off uh, with level six. Uh, we already covered this one uh, for the first order special forces tie pilot. Tie pilot. I'm not going to read all of it, but as you can see, um, there are some uh, references that leader gains, so it does not need to be first order. Looks like to gain bonuses. Uh, I mean, Stormtrooper won't be scoring lots of hits, uh, so can't really uh, help us there. But if the leader scores a critical hit, they gain additional 10% offense and all other first order allies recover 15% health and protection. So if you're using him under Sif Eternal, Sif Eternal crits somebody, uh, gets uh, stacks its own offense and then a little bit heals up uh, first order Stormtrooper so he can taunt even longer. Whenever the leader uses an ability, remove 1%. Okay, this won't really make all that much difference here. Uh, whenever tax this damage so this could be nice right so whenever the leader is not damaged during the enemy's turn uh, because obviously if you got Sif Eternal there are tanks around one of the other tanks gets hit uh, then uh, your first order trooper first order stormtrooper will gain damage immunity for one turn so definitely I think there could be a nice use because uh, obviously unless you use first order, first order stormtrooper under Supreme Color Ran but considering his data crone is so powerful already, maybe he won't need a tank. So I think this could be a nice use there here uh, as a tank. And also level 9 is pretty good. I actually, uh, that's what I rolled on my first data crone. So I don't have Kylo uh, or uh, Pilot um, level 9 yet. Um, I did roll this one and I did try just on the Supreme Color Ren. And oh boy, first order Stormtrooper is really thick with this level 9. He will gain 100% max health and protection at the start of the battle and then leader gains 50% armor penetration and offense so it doesn't say first order leader so this again will feed a little bit extra stats to whoever is in the leading slot like in my case Sif Eternal uh, doing a little bit more damage which uh, obviously is always uh, nice so whenever stunning so, well, we won't really be stunning a whole lot so not much else to do here uh, whenever first order is critically hit uh, won't really help us a whole lot because probably he will be the only first or uh, first or ally here. Uh, yeah, so not a whole lot really here. Apart from stormtrooper, will make himself very durable, very tanky, and then also give some armor penetration and offense to the leader. So I don't think that's a bad use if you do that. Uh, gun guns again. If we want to go Balkron here. Uh, and then this one, the shield generator one. I think this is the one to go for. Uh, so what about Gangalala is damage? Uh, I won't read it all through because to be honest, I don't really use Gangan, so I don't really know what all this means. Uh, but essentially it's the level 6 with the biggest uh, chunk of text you want to roll. And then for level 9, I guess there is a debate, Bosnas, Jar Jar. Again, with my limited knowledge of Gangans, well, hardly any knowledge really. Uh, I think 
at least on paper this one could be better because the first time the allied shield generator plasma shield reaches zero it recovers 10 stacks of plasma shield because remember to uh, be actually be able to do some damage to gun guns you first have to take out shield generator um, so that's why I think this will make just shield generator last a little bit longer uh, so I think personally this could be a better one for defensive purposes at least I don't know and then for Dr. Afra um, for everybody I, I would use go for bulk run but maybe for Afra this could be better because whenever Dark Side allies start their turn for each enemy with fewer than 4 debuffs that ally gains 30% potency until end of the turn and remember Afra she has this whole siphon mechanics for potency the more she has potency the more damage you get and things like that uh, so essentially she can get a turn uh, and if there are five enemies with less than 40 buffs, which in most cases there will be like Afra, they don't dish out that many debuffs, two or three maybe. Uh, so what we're actually getting 150% uh, potency uh, for Afra. So maybe that could play, play nicely with her. I don't know. Um, and then let's moving on. Uh, again, we got John Skywalker, uh, Balkron. <laughs> More damage reduction for Galactic Republic. Uh, rip CLS, basically. Good luck beating John Skywalker with CLS with all this damage reduction on here. Uh, same thing, I think, uh, Bad Batch. They haven't really had much use uh, recently, like all this uh, Qui-Gon, Kellen Backs are, you know, totally wrecking them and Trench and everything. Uh, however, with the damage reduction for our Galactic Republic ally, Maybe Bad Batch will be back on the menu uh, to actually do something again on offense. Or even be annoying on defense. And then level 9 uh, level nine for a Bad Batch mm, attack. I mean, you know, whenever tech uses an ability, they deal more damage equal to half of their potency. Mm. I don't know. So even you have 200, you would have to have 200% potency on tech to do 100% more damage. Um, would that apply also on the true damage from the defense up? Again, hard to hard to exactly understand how this will work. But I guess a little bit of extra damage is nice. But definitely having this in combination with Balkron, that batch will be able to do some stuff again. I think. I know at the moment we have uh, Qui Gon and Kellen back uh, already. They have their own data crons with the Jedi. However, once those expire. Why not get ready a couple of Galactic Republic one as well with uh, reduction damage, uh, you know, just to future proof your them because again we have no idea what the next sets will be, and just just you know kind of generic just uh, uh, throwing down a few teams just a reminder get as many as you can level freeze uh, for adding extra health and protection for everybody, and then for Emperor Palpatine again Balkron level six you could I guess go for an Inquisitor. Because Inquisitors are Empire, if you do run Empire under Palpatine, you could go down the first order route. Uh, if maybe you want to throw Sith uh, Trooper in there, his Sith as well. Um, I don't know. So there are some opportunities there to do some sort of mixing and matching, maybe something with Star Killer in there. I don't know. Uh, just something obviously to think about. But again, you know, I, I would make it a high priority. Um, and then Bo-Katan, I guess, we don't know uh, what will be with her now that her data crown expired. So just extra bulk, I guess, is nice. Uh, same thing for Gideon. Uh, we'll see what Gideon can now finally do without uh, an Empire um, uh, data crown there. So we'll see. But extra bulk for him is nice. Same thing for Seer, extra bulk. And you could throw in like a stacking First Order ally as well. This were first order like kind of boosting a little bit stats for your uh, leader because uh, many of us they do like to run uh, color and mask under seer you can even throw og color in there right just to get two extra first order guys um, so maybe you know why not uh, and then finally queen amidala we don't know exactly uh, you know what will be with her but we will be unlocking her many of us what in 10 days time or so get some bulk get i guess a reducing damage for galactic public if you do have lumi on paper she might be good right with her whole uh heal over time and thing that she has going on uh, so maybe this could be nice as well so we'll have to wait and see 
so this is the list again uh, it's one of those seasons where you will just probably want to get as many level 3 that you can with the bulk because you know every team can use extra survivability maybe night sisters not maybe night sisters you do want them to die so maybe night sisters could could use potency maybe night sisters right so you can land that plague uh, over bulk so maybe actually night sisters that's a interesting idea as well for some potency not bulk all right guys hopefully this video was useful and helpful uh, again just the link in the description below to my swag of life website if you want to check this list out uh, whenever you need a reminder of you know what i recommend to use but again at the moment it's all theory right we'll have to put these data crowns to test but definitely the supreme color rand one uh, definitely looks quite bonkers from the initial testing that some already have done out on youtube Thank you for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one, but until then have fun, enjoy your life and may the RNG be with you my friends.